Hey, what's up? We're doing another uh, coding interview question today. The best company, Google, of course. You know, it's just one of the best. Everyone loves Google, right? So this is a Google coding interview question. This could come up in a Google interview. Uh, this is asked by Google according to Code Signal. This is linked in the description. Go to Code Signal. You go to interview prep and you'll find it in there. Sum of two, asked by Google. Oh, yeah, let's just get into it. All right, so here's the problem that we're going to be dealing with here. We have two integer arrays, A and B. So two arrays of numbers, and then we also get a target value. We have to take a number from one number from both of those arrays and determine whether there are two numbers where one is from each array that add up to that target value. So, you know, one number from A, one number from B, and they have to be added together to get a sum of V, the value that we're given as well. Return true if this is possible, false if not. All right, so here's an example of some kind of input we would get. We're going to have this function sum of two. That's what it's called. That's the name of the problem. We take an A and B, which are integer arrays, so arrays of numbers. You can see here, for example, A could be an array of 1, 2, 3. B can be an array of 10, 20, 30, 40. And then we also have this value V, right? So V could be 42, for example. We want to return true or false, so it's a Boolean method, depending whether or not we can pick a number from A and a number from B so that they add together to equal V. So if you look in A, we got 1, 2, and 3, and B, 10, 20, 30, 40. Okay, so if we take 40 from B and 2 from A, so a number from each of them, and we add 40 plus 2, then we get 42, which is V. So in this case, we do return true because it's a number from each array. We can add them together, and we can get the value. So in the last example, we saw the arrays were sorted and they had positive numbers, but these arrays don't have to be sorted. So in this example, you can see these arrays are not sorted that we're getting here. You might also notice that they don't have to be positive either. There could be zeros, there could be negative numbers. The numbers in the array can be from, you know, negative a million to positive a million. The value that we're given can be negative. So in this case, we're getting a negative eight. So that could be between negative a million, positive a million. So there's no restrictions here, really. It, it could be an empty array. It could have 10,000 elements. It could be, you know, small and, and like no elements or very large array, right? A ton of elements. And the numbers in the array and the values we get, they could be negative, positive, large or small. So in this example, we get negative eight as our value. We get these arrays, A and B. So is there an element in each of these arrays that add together to become negative eight? Well, yes, there's negative five from... A, the first array, and negative three from B, the second array. Add negative five and negative three, you get negative eight. So we return true. Remember, this is just a Boolean method, so we're not worried about what pair of numbers we get. We're just worried about, is there a pair of numbers, one from each array, that add to the value we're given? If so, true. If we never find any of them, false. So one of the strategies, I don't know if you guys are aware of, but it's pretty commonly known that Think about intuition first. So how you would solve this just by looking at it, and this is kind of a problem, just looking at it, like we knew negative five and negative three added to be eight, just looking at it. How did you do that in your mind? Well, you just looked through the array for a number, and then you looked through the other array for a match for that number. So that is an algorithm. That's actually like a common strategy that people tell you to do, like, Think of your intuition. Sometimes you'll even get the optimal time complexity solution just based on your intuition. And if not, you can at least get a starting point like we did here. So we've come up with an algorithm based on our intuition where basically we're going to look at each element and just look for a match for that element that would add with it to get negative eight. So for zero, we'd look and we'd say, okay, is there a negative eight in here? Because we need a negative eight plus zero is negative eight. No. Okay, zero. Is there a negative eight? No negative five and then you look okay no no negative three plus negative five equals negative eight so we found the match so that's how we did it in our mind kind of a lot faster than that but that's just a way for us to do it and that is the brute force solution so that's a good starting point it's always a good idea to you know get your brute force solution down first in an interview just so your interviewer knows okay this person at least knows something right so here's the code for our brute force solution you can tell it's brute force because of the staple nested for loops uh, that's very common in all of the brute four solutions and uh, basically this worst case is just going to be for each element of one array as we loop through it we're going to loop through every element of the other array so that's the worst case and that's pretty bad so we're going to want to improve on that 
You can see that we're just looping through each element of one array on the outer loop here. We're calculating this needed value, basically the value we're trying to get to by adding two numbers together. We're going to subtract one of the number we're currently looking at from that to find out what other number we need. Once we know what other number we need, we loop through the entire other array and we say, hey, is that other value that we need in this array? If it is, okay, that means there's there are two numbers that add up to that value that we're trying to get to. So we'll return true, right? It's just a Boolean method. We don't return the values. And if we don't find it, we just go on to the next value in the other array and we just keep calculating the needed value, keep looking for those needed values in the other array. If we don't find it anywhere, if we don't find a pair that add up to equal V, we just return false. There is no match. This is a brute force. So we can definitely improve on this to get from A times B. We want to get that down to, you know, A plus B. Where in worst case, we're only looping through each array maybe once compared to, you know, looping through, you know, one array every single time for each element of the other one. It's a lot better. It's a lot. It's a huge improvement. So let's look at how we can do that. So a common strategy I'm hoping we're all familiar with in these interviews is that we can usually speed up uh, our time complexity if it's bad, like in this case it's pretty bad, by using a data structure. So maybe we, you know, maybe we have memory to spare in this case and we don't have time to spare, right? We need this done fast, but you know, we have some memory we can use. So what is a data structure we can use to speed this up, right? And we already talked about how, you know, we don't want to use arrays, another array, because we're, we're going to loop through the array and then do something. And, you know, we're just, arrays are out of the question. We need something that's fast. And there are some data structures, hash tables and hash sets in particular, that uh, have constant time puts and lookups, right? So we can put values into them and get values from them to, or do checks on them in constant time. And we're basically going to be looping through each number of one array. And for each element, we're going to calculate the complement. Complement meaning the other value we need to add to the current element to get the value we're looking for. So in this case, we're looking for negative 8, right? And we start off at 0. So what we'll do is use this formula here and we'll subtract the current element zero from negative eight to see what other number we need. So we calculate negative eight. So to get negative eight with a zero, we need to, a negative eight in this other array. So we're gonna put that into our complements hash set, which takes no time at all to put it in there. Okay, now we loop to the next element, zero. It's gonna be negative eight again because it's the same exact element. So negative eight minus zero again, negative eight. And the next element is negative 5. So using our formula, we calculate that negative 8 minus negative 5 is negative 3. And that makes perfect sense, right? We need a negative 3 in the other array to add to negative 5 to get negative 8. So we put negative 3 into our complements hash set. And then for the last element, we calculate that. The complement of that is going to be negative 30,220. Uh, so we're going to need to put that in the complements hash set and we'll look for that in the other array. So now we've looped through all of the elements in the one array so far. And we filled up the complements hash set. So each of these numbers corresponds to what we need to add to each number to get to negative 8. Which is exactly what we're looking for, right? So this is filled up. All we did was loop through this one array tw uh, once. And now this isn't going to be a nested loop. This is going to be... A, a loop separate right so now we just have to loop through the other array much faster right this is only one loop through each array uh, instead of you know going over this every single time over and over again right so we're just going to loop through this and see oh is this number in our map and if it is then that means we found a pair that add up so now all we need to do is loop through the other array and say is this current number in the hash set and if it is, that means we found a pair, right? Because these are the numbers that we're looking for now. Uh, so is negative 10 in here? No. Is, neg is 40 in here? No. Uh, is negative 3 in here? Yes. So in this case, we found it. We can just return true at that point. And that, uh, that alone speeds up our algorithm to, you know, a linear time. Um, we're just looping through each array once. So it's just A plus B instead of A times B, which is just so big in terms of improvement on our time complexity. 
So let's look at this in code now. So here is the code for our optimal solution. You can see the loops are no longer nested. So worst case, we're just looping through one full array and the other full array right afterwards, right? You know, we're gonna be looping through this array every single time. We're just filling up this differences hash set or complement or whatever you wanna call it. You can call it hash set if you want. Same formula, just the value minus the current element, fill up that hash set. And then the last thing you do is just loop through the other way. Look through with these constant time lookups. If the current element is contained in the hash set, then you return true because you found a matching pair that add up to that value. Otherwise you return false. So same thing, the only difference is the for loops are now separate, not nested, a lot better in time complexity here. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Definitely a shorter video because it's not that, it's not really not a, that difficult of a problem here. Uh, the trick is just thinking about how we can use a data structure to speed up our time complexity after brute force. And uh, yeah, always think of you know hash sets, hash maps because they do constant time puts and gets. Uh, contains as well so you know these are very fast data structures right think of those keep those in mind when you're solving problems and uh, yeah definitely one of the easier ones we might get into harder ones later but uh, I do want to get down the easy ones first and then we're gonna move into you know much more difficult ones eventually so thank you guys for watching please like and subscribe this video to help me promote my channel and uh yeah also feel free to support me on my patreon is in the description join the discord all that stuff uh it's all in the description there so i appreciate you guys um thank you for watching and uh i'll see you in the next problem peace